The federal government lifts ban placed on interstate travels and in Ondo state an alleged impeachment plot is foiled as other issues arise. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Izewike. You're welcome to the program. The ban placed on interstate travel has been lifted by the federal government. This was announced by the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Box Mustafa, at a daily briefing of the task force in Abuja. This announcement is to take effect from July 1. He also said the government has approved a safe resumption of domestic flights in the country and what it called safe reopening of schools nationwide where only graduating pupils in primary six, junior secondary three and senior secondary school three will resume in the next phase of the gradual easing of the lockdown. Joining us to discuss this is medical practitioner Benjamin Oluwa Jebutu and uh, we also have reputation manager Tubosu Akeju. Thank you gentlemen for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. All right, I'll start with you, um, Dr. Olowo Jabutu. Uh, let, let's begin with the lifting of the ban on interstate travels and the resumption of domestic flights. What do you think is the reasoning behind this decision and is it valid considering uh, where we are with the COVID-19? Thank you very much, Felicity. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's very valid. I, don't, I think... Um, the government has thought about um, economic depression, economic economic work, and money rather than the lives of the page, of, of the people, because it doesn't make any sense. We're not flattening the curve anyhow. We're not we're not we're getting more cases every day. So why are you having why are you why are you opening up the the, 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 the the interstate travel? For what reason? The only reason you can talk about that is is income generation for the government. It's about just selfish interest. It's not about the it's not it's not about the people. It's not it's not about the the, the the value of the lives of the citizenry, because it's painful. Yesterday we had we had, we had more cases in Lagos. We had more cases more cases in Kano in Ndo State. Now, are you saying that you want you want to start having what we call interstate COVID-19 transference or trans or, 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 or transmission? But what would be the alternative? What would be the it alternative? Because make... if, uh, let me interject and say, what would be the alternative? Because if, if we look at it, uh, the government is caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. We have an economy that is failing. We have other sectors that is being neglected. Education, there needs to be some sort of cycle. These are unprecedented times. So what other alternatives are there for the government to explore uh, without, you know, creating more catastrophe for the people. Okay, very simple. Why, why have, we, have, have, have we developed the intrastate translation first? You are saying that people should, people should drive maybe two on the seat, three on the Have we monitored them properly first? You've not monitored the intrastate transport first. I am now talking about interstate transport. It means that you've not validated why you've done interstate first to be able to juxtapose the reason of bringing the interstate. We are, these things have increased, increased the cases. We've reduced our fiscal distancing. It has, not, it has not helped. Are we monitoring them? So even if government says they want to do open up the borders, who, who is monitoring these principles to make it work in Nigeria right now? Nobody's doing it. So we are, we are faced with this challenge, but there's no proper monitoring. I, I would have thought about um, government bringing out some very good, uh, for uh, the, the National Orientation Agency, bringing very, very nice jingles, very powerful instructions that, that will sink into people's understanding that this, the reason why we are even opening up this border is not just for you to just think everything is, every, everything is, is, is all, all squared up. All right, you know, if I understand you proper, clearly, you, you, you are saying that government has not done enough due diligence for them to be taking yes, the decision that they are yes, taking now. Yes. Okay. We have not done due diligence. Yes, we've not done that. All right, let's bring uh, Mr. Kedju into the conversation. And I will ask you, Box Mustafa, during that briefing, talked about safe resumption of domestic flights in the country. From your observation, are the measures outlined safe enough? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I agree with the later part of what uh, the doctor said, that 
we should have had a lot of um, campaigns from the National Orientation Agency. It's uh, a bit disappointing that the strongest and the most obvious campaign that we've heard about COVID-19 has come from um, the private sector coalition, which is CACOVID. And I think that if we have to be sincere with ourselves, we know that we didn't really have any interstate lockdown. Um, there were quite a number of people, you know, even on social media, who traveled across regions in this country, not states, I mean regions, people coming from southeast to the southwestern part of this country, passing through about five, seven states, you know, and they just had to pay their way through. So we didn't really have a serious lockdown. And uh, what I see that is happening globally is that at the beginning of the pandemic, the coronavirus was not as understood as it is today. And we're not even done, you know, getting all the facts about coronavirus. If you listen to what the um, WHO released yesterday, they even said that, you know, um, we are still, there's still a lot of, you know, danger ahead. And, you know, the, 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 um, the general was, 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 did apologize if it sounded like an alarmist, but just the reality of things that he's still scared. So I think that what we are, what we have to settle with, like you said, we are between the devil and the deep blue sea. And I think that what we can settle with is the proper education of the people of Nigeria about COVID-19. Because I think that we are getting to the stage where if we properly understand the treatment of COVID-19, then the fear would be reduced. If All right, uh, but, but um, it becomes I, I would as like easy to get, as possible. Uh, Mr. Kaju, I would like to get your specific reaction to the safe reopening of the aviation sector because um, just days ago, we understand that uh, some journalists were taken through the process of how domestic flights are going to be uh, to look like going forward. And I'm now asking, mm. based on your observation of all that is being done, all the guidelines that been given all that is in the news are the measures outlined safe enough for us to begin domestic flights are they we don't have a problem with guidelines we have a problem with enforcing those guidelines, those that's guidelines it, that's it. they look very good they look compliant with who guidelines they look compliant with medical guidelines the question that remains is are we going to enforce properly enforce the guideline. You know, I was just about getting to a, a part of my conversation there to say that just about a week or two ago, Boss Mustafa literally was telling us in the media that they've lost control of the situation as far as interstate lockdown is concerned. So from my own point of view, what happened yesterday is almost like, you know what, this interstate lockdown right. was really never there anyways. You know, you might as well just continue to move. But if if there was if there's anything I would advise or what my suggestion would be is that even if you would ask people to continue to move around, can we all know all the things we need to do? Can we become can the enforcement of all the guidelines be everybody's duty? I.e., you can't walk around without your face mask. You have, you know, you need your hand sanitizers. If you yeah, feel you, you, this you, you, particular you way, start um, to self-isolate. Yeah, yeah, you, you certainly seem to agree with uh, Dr. Oloa Jebu too. Uh, but let's, let's come back to you, Doctor, and take your perspective on the reopening of schools. Uh, even though it is for the graduating class and not all schools, we know that primary, crutch, and the uh, lives are still short. Now, are the gains what the move? What is most worrisome for you about this decision of the government? Now, we know clearly that um, the folks that, um, that have gone down with COVID are the, are, the, are the children and the very elderly people that have very low immunity. Now, I, 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 are you saying that they've been educated properly about their immunity to go into a school? For example, somebody uh, somebody lives with, a, with an old parent that has COVID, and and she's a grandchild and goes to a school and began be, now begins to spread the COVID symptoms to other children. What Subosman has said is very very important. Are we educating people properly on the guidelines on the on what they need to do? Now, what I think, um, Felicity, is that most private school private schools owner 
are the ones agitating for these things to be open because of money, because they're thinking about they will not be able to pay salaries. They will not, I don't think school should open now. I don't think we're not ready for it. No, because the children are our children. If one person, God forbid, dies today, the schools will be locked back again. So what's the point? Why are we in a hurry? These cases are not going down. They are going up every, new cases every day. And guess what? We're not, we're not, even, doing, we're not even doing adequate, adequate testing. So it means that there are so many people walking around in Lagos or in Nigeria that are carrying the COVID symptoms that they're not even tested. For example, what, what, what happens to a teacher that, is COVID, that, that, that has COVID symptoms and is coughing right there with, with, with the children or talking to, talking to their mouth and they, and they go home and infect their parents? I don't think schools should open now because we're not, we're not ready for it. First things, baseline first. Let's do more campaigns, more instructive campaigns. National, national origin, 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 do more campaigns in different, in different languages. Yoruba, Awusa, Igbo, every language. And, and, what, and in, in a very, very, very subtle manner that children can also understand. Then if we get to that point of, 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 of understanding with a, with, a good, with a good referendum, we cannot open the schools as agreed by medical standard with the with the school owners schools should open because of profit margin or because people are people are eager to open school because they're, they're losing money let's not take 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 on economic value rather than life values All people right. will lose their lives if we open schools down like this i can bet you that because we're not ready for it do, do all the schools do they have do they have infrared thermometers do they have have they all been? Have they all been? Have they, have they all been, been screened? Are the teachers also? Have, have teachers done their, done, done all their COVID testing? A very important question you're COVID raising, uh, Doctor. Um, let, let's look at other aspects of the uh, conversation as well. Considering the continued relaxation of um, lockdown measures. Of what relevance, really, is the curfew that we still have? They say that still remains from 10 p.m. Uh, to 4 a.m. Mr. Kedju, I'm bringing this question to you. You see, again, um, I've always, you know, questioned some of those things. When you say um, no coffee uh, and you ask people to stay in for a period of time, I still don't understand what the coffee is for. What I think is happening right here is... The government is trying, you know, as much as they can to have um, a resemblance of control, um, which is not really there. I still question what they, I, I truly, truly, from the beginning, do not understand the logic of the coffee. Having said that, I think what is, again, very important for us to do at this point is, because it appears that we're, ben we're seriously benchmarking with the West, and I think that the cases of coronavirus here in Nigeria has a bit been different from even the most ravaged part of the West. And I think we need yeah. to understand our own unique situation, find the regime that is working, walk through those data properly. Because while I agree uh, with some, a lot of the things that the doctor has said, for, for, for diseases like this, sometimes what you need is the confidence in people to be able to you know, know that if I come down with this thing, it's not the end of the road for me. Let, let, let me, come let me out be a clock in the wheel for a it. second, uh, Mr. Kedju. And I ask you, you said we should look for our own unique solutions. Um, yeah. We've had this virus with us since February. We, it, 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 we, it became uh, public knowledge in December. So give or take, we've had close to six months. And there doesn't seem to be any uniqueness in the way that we are tackling the virus. We seem uh, mostly to be copying what is being done in other climes. They relax, we relax. Case spikes, they shot, they we shot. So, I mean, if that is not happening, what are the alternatives we should be exploring? So, so um, Felicity, can I say something, please? Uh, all right, uh, we'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Kedju. Just uh, let's hear uh, Dr. Lewo Jabutu. No, I, I, like, I, like, I like that very, very important questions. And what Tubo also said was very, was, was very key. I'll tell you something. Most, most of the symptoms that we, were, that we had in, in Lagos or in Nigeria are, are asymptomatic. So we, we didn't have the natural fever, Malay, the cough, the sore throat that, that other people had in America and other places. Some people just had just leg pain. 
Some are just stomach pain. Some are just, just little headaches. And they, they go for a test in Naima and they diagnose of having COVID. So what he has said is important. Have we sat down to look at how are the symptoms in Nigeria seen? What is the most important symptoms that have we seen in the last six months? Then we can come in on, on research. We can say, okay, if people came to came came, came out came with COVID with more stomach pain um, and more and more and more and more leg pain, that means the pain medicines are more important than even the fever medicines. So we're not just copying and pasting what, what is being used abroad. Now, they've talked about vaccines, talked about research on clinical trials, on, on, on hydro, um, hydro, 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 hydrochloroquine uh, in the doctor, past I just, few I months. Nobody talking about, um, uh, about I'm sorry, I, I need to interject. And let's allow uh, Mr. Keju to finish his thought because I was actually uh, taking him up on something he said. We'll come back to you. Please don't forget what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Keju, could you um, respond to that? Okay, so, um, I mean, doctor has even gone, you know, almost halfway with my point to say that I've, I've, I've looked at the data that is available to the public because that's all I have. And I've seen that, you know, there are, all the symptoms are mild. There are a very uh, small number of people that have, you know, the, um, some of those extreme um, um, symptoms. Um, number two thing I've discovered is that the average recovery time is about 10 days. So now, one of the fears that we are having now is that one, if, you, if you've spoken to anybody that's gone to the isolation center, they're not getting a lot of, um, you know, the best of, 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 of um, hospitality, allow me to say that, at the isolation center. So people are scared to go there. So if we get through the regimen to say that these are the basic symptoms people are having, what we will come back to is a situation where if you come down with it, you have the faith that... You can take one, two, three steps, stay in your house, self-isolate your house within, and you know that if you follow a regime of treatment and all of that, within the period of 10 days, you will be fine and you can move around. All right. As against the present method that we have, where people are running, are living in self-denial, moving around, and are increasing our community transmission. Uh, uh, Mr. Kedju, you know. so uh, I th okay. just wrap up quickly so we can get her, him yeah, to so conclude uh, so we can yeah. talk about other issues. So, so I, think, I think that if we look at our own unique situation and create our own pattern of approaching this issue, then the news like what we saw yesterday, we had the Commissioner of Health in Lagos State is saying that there are about two, over 2,000 people that have tested positive and have not showed up will not be the case. All right, uh, Dr. Olowo Jabutu, uh, could you uh, complete your thought um, before I ask you the next question? So, as I was saying, uh, in, 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 in the end of the word, to what I said, we must develop our own practical solution that is Nigerian focused, which means we look at the data. So, it's not everybody that has, that, that, for example, most people that, that have had the extreme, extreme symptoms are those that had underlying comorbidities. You know, they are diabetic, they had cardiac issues, they are hypertensive, some had HIV, so, so, so some are HIV patients, you know. So if you look at it, those that have done well, and we, are, we, are, we are not focusing a lot on those that have done well in the, in the isolation center to learn from them. Sometimes they don't, even, they, don't even, they, don't give, they don't even give them anything. It's just, just keeping them safe in that place. I, I, hydration and nutrition, that's what, they, that's what they give them. And the cost, because it's a viral disease, it takes its cost and it just goes. So it's important as a nation, we sit and look at our patients and the recovery rate and get our own identity on how to treat COVID-19 okay. patients. All right, uh, let me now ask you this. A, a lot of monies, okay, let me send this question to you, uh, Mr. Kaju. A, a lot of monies have been donated, uh, allocations have been made from the federal government. So uh, this should come in, um, I mean, in, in your uh, response. The, uh, Nigerian Union, or should I say National Union of Road Transport Workers, is saying that there is every likelihood that fares will be increased due to the social distancing guidelines uh, when it comes to transportation. Same with air travelers. The Road Union is asking uh, for government's intervention um, in 
if the price hike is to be averted, basically, to take care of those who they will not uh, be charging because seats are supposed to be empty. Do you see this happening? Is there a way uh, from the chaotic situation we have, we have motor parks all over the country, both regulated and unregulated. How do you think, should the government decide that monies will be disbursed and it will get to the people who need it? Any subsidy that does not impact on the final consumer is always an effort in futility. You know, is always a, an opportunity for corruption. Having said that, so first, so I'm not in support of any subsidy. The fact of the matter is, our life will never remain the same. You know, uh, we've spent um, about, I mean, for my own office, we've spent about three months working from home successfully. We are never, I'm not sure, we'll never return to a five day a week life in the office, never again. I don't think that's going to happen. So the same mm -hmm. will affect travel generally across the world is just the basic principle more people will stay in the back side of their own use technology to communicate with people across the world mm -hmm. so i don't think that the nigerian government should saddle themselves with that burden of trying to subsidize the cost of transportation i don't think so let the only people who have to move let it be of, of utmost importance it is absolutely necessary for you to leave your house and go somewhere at any point in time Yes, will it affect the? Will it have an impact on the economy? It will have an impact on the economy, but we will quickly adjust and understand that we we don't have to constantly, you know, continue to um, um, move around when we don't, you know, um, have to. So I think we have to come to the, you know, we have to come to realize that some of uh, the buses that we used to have four people sitting inside is going to reduce, you know, to two people um, on on the seat. And that might go as far as you know. That might go as far as doubling the cost. But let's also realize that if a car can take 10 kg of goods from Ibadan or to Lagos at 5,000, we should be good Nigerians enough to know that that <laughs> should not impact things like that. And I think that that's, those are the things that government needs to start to look at to speak to the conscience and the, you know the, the the inner minds of people to say that. You know, we are all in this together. Appeal to their, you know, their the, 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 their humanity. The, 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 so the appeal doesn't to seem to be working, people. to be honest with you, because we know that people are uh -huh. still flouting so many rules. Come on, the use of face mask. We have um, some people having difficulty, and some don't even believe. I spoke with someone yesterday who doesn't believe there is COVID-19. This person is highly um, educated. Uh, we're out of time, so I'll just go to uh, Dr. Oloa Diabutu with this uh, question. Um, from all you've seen, you're uh, in the front line. You know what is happening uh, with the um, uh, health sector as it stands. What would be, in your opinion, a more appropriate course of action in the overall management of COVID-19 situation so that we do not shut down the society completely? First thing is, is accountability. You spoke about donations, funds given to given because of COVID. And I, I have not seen clearly how the presidential tax force has been accountable to the people of Nigeria, telling us, okay. We have gotten so so amount of money, and this is where the monies are going to to affect the the very very important health sector in Nigeria. Imagine the imagine the imagine Boss Mustafa said that he didn't he didn't know that the health 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 sector health sector is is this dilapidated. It doesn't because w w when they have headaches, they can go abroad and go and treat their But now that the, that 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 the shutdown, they have to they have to visit the hospitals themselves. So first, there has, there has to be accountability. Then two. All, all the banks that are donating money now to COVID because of COVID, what, didn't they not see that the health sector has been bad for a long time? Why can't they donate those things that are donated to government and donated back to the hospital? If, if a bank says that I want to improve the primary health care centers in my vicinity with my, with my CSR, it's, it's more valuable and valid than just donating one billion, two billion to government that we know that is all, is all, is all siphoned. We don't even hear about, the, about it. So right. ultimately, our health care will become what we, what we decide of it to become. What we have to be accountable, and everybody must be part of the process, not just government and also the followership. All right. Thank you very much. Um, your final thoughts on this, uh, Mr. Akeju? 
Um, the one of the publications that you know went viral last week of a patient really did show to me that uh, from I mean at least from our, this person's experience that about sixty to seventy percent of the effort to survive well while at the isolation center were things that she learned herself. I think that government and everybody involved at the front line and the decision makers should please make concerted efforts to educate Nigerians on what they need to do, you know, to fix this problem once and for all. I think we can do a lot better than we're doing at the moment. I agree with you. We certainly can. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Kedju, thank you. Thank you for having me. And Mr. Dr. Oluwa Jebutu, thank you as well for your time. Thank you for having us. Bye. All right, bye. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, what is happening in Ondo State? Stay with us.